Welcome, dear friends and families. What a joy to invite all of you, my friends and families all around the world. And today, you're going to really, amazingly, you're going to, you are going to witness something awesome tonight all around the world. And this is my beautiful family, my beautiful sisters, Abina and Sheila and Daniel. My other sisters are here praying, and you're going to have a wonderful night today. Please call your friends, and today, this is a program that we're going to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ first, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. We all need Him so very much. Let's invite Him as we really ask Him to be part of this big, huge yes. plan, okay? Dear loving Father in heaven, we love you. We adore you, we we'll glorify you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, fountain of all the blessings, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, create in us a new heart and a new mind. Your people are waiting to hear you. Your people are here waiting to see you. Your people are waiting that you may emancipate them. Your people are waiting. All those persecuted people around the world, they will see your glory. All the suffering people around the world, they are going to see your glory. You love, you, care, you come to save every one of them in the world. Please honor this beautiful evening and anoint this program. Anoint every one of us. May your anointing Break every yoke in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 So, very good evening, uh, my wonderful families and friends. Uh, what a joy uh, to invite you for this amazing program. Uh, we are starting with this beautiful program. Uh, it's like, you know, my program is called, uh, it's looking a little funny, but it has a lot of meaning. Uh, I'll explain to this. This is very, very beautiful. Uh, Trinity, timidity, or timidity. What is this? What is Trinity. That is what I'm going to really explain to you. That is, that's our faith. Trinity is our faith, and I stick to the faith. Uh, it, it doesn't start yesterday. Uh, it started 3 and 25 AD, the Nicene Creed. That is my faith, the faith of our people. And the next word, timidity, Paul, when he's addressing to uh, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul was admonishing Timothy, the Lord has not given a spirit of cowardice. He has not given a spirit of fear and low self-esteem, but he has given a spirit, a sound mind. That's why from timidity, we are going to timidity. As Solomon says, in chapter 28 of Proverb, Solomon says, you have to be bold as a lion. And we are called the Lion of Judah, Christ International. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, Jesus Christ is going to be the Lion, the tribe of Judah, and he is going to meet all your needs tonight. Whatever you are going through tonight, whatever is your problem, maybe you really received a a uh, call from the doctor, it is a very grim news. Everything is going to change tonight. Everything is going to change tonight. You're going to see an amazing, 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 you know, the presence of Christ. It is, it is not anymore, you know, about uh, men doing something. Because, you know, it is the time that we let the Holy Spirit minister to you. And, you know, he comes not with a persuasion. He doesn't come with a human wisdom. But he comes with the anointing, the empowerment. 
My dear folks, you have to know that uh, our disciples, that uh, you know, w w the handpicked disciples, they were utterly failed. They failed to be under their Calvary. Peter said, I will die for you, and every other disciple said, but unfortunately, nobody could be able to be there except his mother, the loyal mother, the mother who was willing to face any challenges. The mother, for 33 years, she ran with the, the mother who ran with the little baby. She never threw the baby in the bath water because, dear people, she's not afraid. She is committed. She said, here I am. I am the bonded slave of the Lord. Be it done according to my word. In Luke chapter 1 verse 38. That's how she signed. She signed. She never bargained for anything. Even though, my dear people, you have to understand. You have to understand. The tyrants. The tyrants. Those tyrants came after her from Rome. From Rome. People. The Rome. People came to look for the little baby. The Herods was looking for this baby that brought. They were afraid that this, this uh, little baby is going to take the position So, my dear people, it is very, very important. It is very important that the, what is commitment means. The commitment is very, very important. Where you wanted to be, and you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, He wanted us to be not only on the Mount of Tabor, those wonderful folks that elite, they were all, they want to be on the top of the world. On the top of the mountain, they said, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here, Lord. That's exactly what Peter and John and James said in the top of the Tabor mountain. But Jesus was saying, that's not the place to be. I want you to walk in the valley. I want you to walk where the people are in darkness. I want you to walk where the people are walking in pain and suffering. They're possessed. The enemy is attacking them day in and day out, dear people. The Lord is saying, go there. Every anointed man and woman around the world, they have to go where people are suffering. The men and women around the world, they have to go where the people are lost. The people who are in the hospitals and the prisons, the people in parts of the world, they've been shedding their blood for their faith. That's what the Lord is saying. You and I have to be there. You ought to be there and I have to be there. If we don't go, who else? Because Jesus Christ is the truth. He is our life. He is our truth. We all keep bragging about that all the time. But how many people are living in darkness, people? People around the world. By the, time, by the year 2020, another couple of years later, there's going to be 7.7 .7 billion people around the world. And you're bragging. You are about a few thousand people. You think that's, that's a church. It's come to save you. No, you come to save the entire mankind. He said in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Go therefore. Go therefore. Baptize them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Behold, I'm with you. That's what this beautiful woman did. The mother of the Lord and our Savior. That I honor so very much, my dear people. Because it's another mother in my own life. She isn't up in heaven. She's rejoicing. Because she's committed her life to raise all these beautiful children for Christ. We started up in India. 
And, you know, in a country where 98% of them are believing in something else, they're not Christians like you and me. They are Hindus. That's where we started. But, you know, it's my mother's formidable faith today. I know where we are and where I'm going because it's our faith. It's her commitment. And today I speak, and she is smiling in heaven. That's why the mama of Jesus Christ is very, very important because she has committed her life. She's not afraid of Egypt. She's not afraid to run, but she ran with a baby. You can run with the same baby. Now he's no more baby. He's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. He's a great king. There's none other king. There is no other name given among the mortals. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is no other name given among the mortals. The only, only name that has been given to you and for me is Jesus. The Jesus, the awesome name, the wonderful name, the sweet name. And today it has become a taboo here in this country, around the world. People are afraid. The enemy is cringing right now as I'm proclaiming. Because I'm not just proclaiming Jesus, but I'm proclaiming Jesus. I am reclaiming Jesus. I am for claiming Jesus. I am post claiming Jesus. And I want to frame everywhere around this country, around the world, that Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Because he brought us out of all the darkness people, from all the oppressions, yes. from all the darkness, we never thought we were going to make it another day. Growing up in India, I never thought. I thought my mom was crazy. But you know, now the more I see how true he is, he is a living God. He is a true God. He's the only God. He has come to save you, people. He has come to save the mankind. And you know, allow him. Why are you afraid, people? Why are you afraid to call upon him? He's there. He wants to redeem you. He wants to heal you. He wants to save you. He wants to fill you. He wants to fill you with all the joy in the world. Don't be afraid. He's not going to take anything out of you. He said, seek me first. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And everything will be added unto you. He's not going to take anything away from you. He's not going to take anything from you, people. Don't be afraid. The man that started this network is the man who was persecuted. His name is Dr. Joseph Nazarella. He is persecuted. And here he is emancipated because this beautiful country is hosting all this. They are embraced as children from all the suppressed and oppressed. This nation is beautiful. And the enemy want to make it ugly. Don't let that happen, people. Don't let that happen. This is the safe haven. And you know how the Lord wanted to do this for you in 14. It doesn't happen overnight. 1492, when Columbus came to this country, I mean, you know, the Americas, and he was a great believer. People doesn't know that he was a great believer. People, he was a Franciscan third order. You don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it. Francis, at the 12th century, is a young man, dedicated his life because the Lord called him. When there was so much darkness around the church, around the world, he called a young man, a layman. He was not a priest. He was not a bishop. He was not a pope. He was not a pastor. But he still speaks he is a custodian in Jerusalem. Even today, you can see anywhere around the holy place, you cannot, you cannot bypass, you cannot skip those Franciscans. Why? Because he was frightened. He was not afraid. His father let him go. He was marginalized, thrown away. But he said he threw everything to follow Jesus Christ. He paid a price, dear people. And Francis, uh, this gentleman, uh, Columbus, Christopher Columbus, he was a Catholic, Christian, but the lady, you know, the one, remember the expedition that 
you talk about Queen Isabel, and you know, you talk about you know, Ferdinand, you know, they did all this evil. Hello, today you're going to rewrite everything. These people were on their knees when the Moors, when the Muslims were attacking Europe all over. Just like what is happening now, ISIS, Al Qaeda is killing the Christian people around the world, people. And that's the time this, this lady, a young lady, and she was so ardent. She was an intrepid. She said, Lord, I'm never let Muslims take over Europe. And she on her knees begged when, when, the, when the Moors were taken to Seville, Toledo, not Ohio, the Toledo. They took most of the places in Europe, the Cordoba. That's why they, they were very angry. They wanted to really build the mosque up there in the ground zero where this man, this gentleman, who has been persecuted in Egypt, he stood there and he cried aloud, Hello, Americans. We are Americans today. But you know, your blood, your DNA, tell me what happened. Why are we just... Why are we so, we're gagged. It's time for us to stand up. You call yourself as a born-again believer. Hello, born-again believers, rise. Rise like what Nicodemus did, people. Nicodemus was a man who came to Christ. And you know, dear people, Nicodemus came in the night very privately. And Jesus talked to him, and he said, tonight, this day, you can be born again. And the man who heard his word, he never stopped right there. And, you know, when there was a time when they were trying to, uh, you know, persecute Christ, he stood there in John chapter 7, dear people. The born again people have to stand upright. They have to stand up. When the people are persecuted around the world, where is your voice, America? Come on, the pastor, Abedini, is still there. What are we doing? What are we doing? He needs a voice. We Christians have to really come together. People of God, come together. If the Lord wants to really bring people from India to speak to you, He can do it because we are so blindfolded because the enemy has blinded the minds and the hearts of the people. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. So it's a time for us to really come together because Nicodemus, he came at the end of his life with the tons of spices. When everything was gone, when all the disciples ran for their life, and he came, the born-again believer came. Look what he did. He threw everything, all, everything upon Jesus. The spices, which was your, his inheritance. That's what you and I should be doing on the body of Christ. When the body of Christ is suffering, it is not the time for you and me to be gloating. Oh, tongue, speaking, tongue, speaking, believers, Bible thumpers, listen to me. Devil chasers, look, the tribulation is already everywhere. People, 160 to 70 million people have been persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. And they have been beheading. Don't you know at this moment what ISIS is doing? What the terrorist organizations are doing to people? They are just destroying people of God everywhere. They are destroying everyone. Please, is the time for us to repent and allow Jesus to come and take over our entire life. People, it is so very important. Jesus needs to come into our life. My dear people, my brothers and sisters are going to be singing a song, and I'm going to throw this quiz to you. Who do the people say I am? And, you know, everybody say their own opinion. He is this, he is that, he was a prophet. The Islam says he was a prophet. But you know, the Muhammad is really saying, Jesus Christ is the anointed one. 
in chapter 3 of Surah, he's saying, you know, Jesus Christ is the anointed one. Your prophet is saying, oh dear people, through many, many, many ways, the Lord wants to show you. Oh dear people, live your Gopadram. Mahakyu Dadina Kuriandi. Avyayana Paryadashan. What is that? Am I talking tongues? No, it's a Sanskrit priestly language. The incarnate will be born of a virgin in a cattle shed. Hello. Hello. The word avatar. The word avatar means awa means coming down. Tara means crossing, the descent. Now you know the avatar, the true incarnation, the Latin word, the incarnation means God assumed the human form. God assumed in order to redeem you, dear people. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, He wants to reach you through many Volumes of books she's going to speak to you. Stay tuned to this network. And it's going to be so eclectic. And you're going to see what an amazing thing God is going to be doing in your life. And we're going to really sing, Who do the people say I am? My beautiful family, my sisters and my brother, they're going to sing for you. It's a Bible quiz. Turn in your answers. And it's a Bible quiz. And as we're going to sing, please listen very carefully. It's time for us to hear him. And I'll come back to pray for you. I am the great light of Jesus. I am that I am is Jesus. I am the great light of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I do believe. Adonai, Adonai, we do believe. Say, yes, yes Lord, Lord, yes, Lord, I do believe. Adonai, Adonai.
sacrifices, philosophers come and gone. Hitler is no more, Napoleon is no more. Yes, crisis. Dear people, you, who do the people say, and that's what the Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ is throwing at everyone, all the believers. There's about 2.3 billion around the world. And you know what? We're all searching for the wisdom and the knowledge. And I challenge you, dear folks, the true wisdom and the true knowledge you don't see anywhere else, but let's see what St. Paul says in Colossians chapter 2. You know, people perish lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4, 6. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Everybody knows about it. John three sixteen. But we need the wisdom. We need the knowledge. Without the knowledge and the wisdom... There is no way we can survive the next minute. The true knowledge. Can Sheila read it? Chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 2 and 3, please. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. All the wisdom and knowledge is found in Jesus Christ. Today, what do you lack? What do you lack? We are going to pray for you tonight all around the world. And tonight is a great day, great day for you people. Whatever you're going through around the world, you may be sick. You may have cancer. You may be depressed. Maybe you've been attacked by ISIS and you've been persecuted, tormented by all the evil demonic spirit. Yes, Dear people, today is the day of redemption. Jesus. Today, Jesus yes, is going to set you free. Yes. Hallelujah. He is healing you. He is setting you free, people, in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. We will be again back on the third week of Friday. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to have wonderful, wonderful programs lined for you. It's very eclectic. And I'm not going to say next week, next, uh, the third week is on the 17th Friday. You're going to see something beautiful. We'll be praising Jesus Christ in so many ways. We want to bring everything, the best that we can give it to. Because we don't want anything mediocre. It's time that Christ should be honored in all that we do. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. We'll be coming to your home. Thank you for letting us in. Love you people. Love you dear friends and families. Thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are really rocking. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We'll see you soon.